Hi guys, so in this video let's talk about gout. So gout is nothing but build up of uric acid in the serum which eventually leads to building up of, I mean, you know, deposition of that uric acid in his joints. So the joints could be anywhere, be it, it could be knee, it could be anywhere, you know, in your body. But especially the first metatarsopharyngeal joint is uh, attacked, okay. So the metatarsophalangeal joint is nothing but this. You can see that this is the metatarsal of this, of this guy. And this is the phalanx, right? So the the place where both of these join, it's called the metacar metatar metatarsophalangeal joint. So it is the first. So it, the usually the first thumb, first uh, big toe is affected. Okay, so first metatarsophalangeal joint is affected. So there are many risk factors for this condition. The main ones are meat and alcohol. Meat, especially red meat, and alcohol, especially wine. These lead to increased production of uric acid which go and deposit here okay and tumor cell lysis so in tumor cell lysis the patient is undergoing chemotherapy and the cells tumor cells are being lysed right so when the tumor cells are being lysed they start producing uh, they start producing a lot of potassium a lot of phosphorus and along with that along with that a lot of uric acid so again this uric acid goes and deposits gets deposited here and the next one is chronic kidney disease where your kidney is unable to excrete uric acid. This leads to uric acid deposition, I mean ele ele elevated and gets depos deposited. So diuretics, especially the thiazide diuretics. So these, uh, these diuretics try to reduce all the electrolytes in our serum, right? Potassium, sodium, everything gets decreased. But then they are unable to excrete uric acid. So uric acid gets elevated and gets deposited. And like I said, the first MTP is always affected, most commonly affected, okay? So, uh, when a patient presents with these symptoms like redness, warmth, pain, all the inflammation symptoms, suddenly, this is an acute episode, alright? In any joint, not just first metatarsophalangeal joint, but it could be anywhere in your body. When uh, a patient presents with those symptoms, the first test he has to undergo is a serum uric acid levels test. So those will always be elevated because this is a uric acid deposition disease, right? So uric acid is going to be elevated. But the most diagnostic test would be, uh, you know, synovial fluid. You'll, you'll get a synovial fluid aspirate from this guy because as you can see in this image, there is a little buildup of fluid as well. So, uh, you know, you aspirate some of this fluid outside and that synovial fluid will be taken to anal analyze. Okay. And during the microscopy, you'll see that the, the crystals, these crystals here, they are needle shaped. So they are like this, needle shaped. And they're also you can see that the yellow lines here, the yellow crystals are parallel to each other. Right. So whenever yellow crystals are parallel to each other and needle shaped, just remember needle shaped, it means that they are negatively biofringent crystals. Okay. And this will be seen in gout. So here there is a differential diagnosis where you can see rhomboid shaped crystals, right? And here blue ones are parallel to each other. You can see here and you can see here. So blue ones are parallel to each other. So this is positively biofringent crystals and this is seen in pseudogout. Alright? So this will be the most, most appropriate diagnosis for this condition. So the treatment for this condition would be in acute cases. So when the patient is presenting with an acute episode, the first thing that you have to do is NSAIDs, right? You control his pain, all right? And then the second drug you give them is colgesine. So colgesine reduces the inflammation. It doesn't let the inflammation happen. So it is used in gouty arthritis, all right? And the third one is corticosteroids. This is to reduce the inflammation again and to prevent a case, to prevent, an, you know, any patient with, you know, always elevated uric acid levels. So there are some patients which who always have elevated uric acid levels, but they do not present with gout, okay? They, may, they might have presented with one or two episodes of gout in history. I mean, there would be a history, but he might not, you know, have it presently. So to, you know, as a prophylaxis to prevent gouty arthritis to occur in future, we give them, we give the patient allopurinol, which reduces the formation of uric acid overall. So this should be the order. So first NSAIDs, if NSAIDs are contraindicated or if it is not enough or not working, then you give him colchicine, then corticosteroids. Okay, so this order is a very important thing that you have to remember. Okay, and the main differential diagnosis for this condition is this. So uh, many gout patients, this gout can also occur in the IP joint. 
so whenever you see that this dip joint is elevated or you know red erythema erythema swelling everything okay then you will think of gout obviously but if it is a chronic guy like if the patient has this these symptoms in you know for a very long time then that means the patient has osteoarthritis because osteoarthritis also affects the dip right and um, if it is an acute cause that would be gout okay so that's all about gout thank you